Hello and welcome to More Tools and Sense, the show where I have proficiency with all tool usage, but I do get disadvantage on all of my wisdom saving throws. Today we'll be building the ultimate tabletop gaming tabletop gaming table. As of late, I've really gotten into playing Dungeons and Dragons, and when you play the game, you need a nice big clean table. I didn't feel like making furniture, so I just bought a table, but this table is definitely not good enough, so we're going to make some improvements. Well, of course, first thing we need are visual aids, so we're going to take this 55-inch TV, we're going to place it down inside the table, and then we want to have it nice and smooth and flat, where we'll put a piece of glass to cover it and protect it, and then also make sure that the glass and the wood are perfectly flush with each other. Well, like most kitchen tables, this one has removable leaves, and these slides that keep the table together, of course, cannot exist here if there is a TV monitor in the center. So what we're gonna do is convert it back to basically a regular table, a solid table, and we're going to take these sliders and use this wood to reinforce the sideboards, which should be the strongest part of the table in a normal table. And then hopefully from there, it'll be strong enough that we can get back to work. Well, I was originally just going to kind of scab this together with the leftover pieces from the sliders, but I'm worried that's not going to be strong enough. I don't want it to be too flexible. So I'm going to go ahead and use this actual piece of wood that I bought from the store and I'm uh, going to make sure it goes all the way from each corner to each corner and that should make the table a lot more rigid. Well, if drilling those holes to mark the corners didn't do it, this should certainly mark the point of no return. And the moment of truth. Perfect. Next up, I need to build some bracing that will hold the monitor in place. With the bracing done, I added these four captive nuts. These bolts are what the monitor are actually going to be sitting on, and they'll work like leveling legs, allowing you to adjust each corner. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> Well, as you can see, the monitor is fit inside the table. I'm very happy with it. I've ordered a piece of tempered glass that's going to cover it up, but that's going to take a little while to arrive. So while that's happening, I'm going to need to work on some other stuff. Now, why have a dedicated gaming table if you're not going to have dedicated artwork to go with it? Now, I was pretty worried that freehanding this with the die grinder was going to be a disaster, so I did do some practicing first. But, all in all, I only made a few very minor mistakes. I'd rate my performance of 17 out of 20. For the next bit of woodworking, I need to put a dado blade into my table saw. And no, that's not a dado blade, and no, that's not a table saw. There they are. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I actually don't do a lot of woodworking, and I've never made anything with box joints. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is build a jig, which is going to cut the fingers to form the box joints. If you haven't guessed yet, these box joints are going to be holding the dice towers together. So I'm going to need to cut all the material, then I need to cut the fingers into the edge of each piece of wood. Then I just need to glue all the pieces together. You guys know how glue works. So 
I'm going to make four of these and it's going to go inside the table, which will slide down inside of it. And then it's got a magnet underneath and then that's going to stick it to the table so that it'll float above the open hole that it slides down into. Now I just got to make three more. Now that the dice towers are done, I need a place for them to go, and I want them to go inside the table. So I've cut a little blank, and then I'm going to make a square, and then you'll be able to take your dice tower and drop it down to disappear. With the dice towers done for now, I wanted to move on to building some drawers for the end of the table. One side is going to have a traditional drawer, and the other side is going to have a keyboard platform. To build the drawers, I'm going to need some more box joints on the end of each piece, and then I need to cut a relief down the middle and the inside of each one. After that, I just need to assemble the pieces. And look at that, the glue does exist. The keyboard platform actually went together a good bit easier, but it didn't have enough room for a mouse as well. One of the players from my game suggested this fold-away mouse platform, and it worked a treat. Good thinking, Ben. Next up, it was back to working on the dice towers. I was never going to be satisfied with the way they were just sitting in there all loosey-goosey, so I needed a more permanent solution. Well, this was a royal pain, but I finally got it just about the way that I like it. But at the same time, it has to be adjusted just perfectly. And in fact, this one, it still isn't adjusted perfectly. There's a little bit of a lip down here, but I'm gonna have to recut this piece. So I'm gonna do that first, and then I'm gonna make it perfect. After that, just have to do it three more times. Well, my custom tempered glass finally arrived, so now it was time to cut the reliefs and make it fit perfectly. Now, of course, having a monitor installed inside your table won't do you any good if you don't have a way to display things on it. I bought this cheap slim tower PC, which I'm now building brackets for to install up underneath the table and keep it hidden away. And if you're gonna have a computer installed, of course, you're gonna need wires and power. One electrical outlet will be powering just the computer and hidden away, but these two are going to be exposed on the outside of the table so that the players can charge their phones and laptops. And to keep everything neat and tidy, of course those wires need to be routed accordingly. All the wiring converges at a single box, which will then power the entire table. Fixing up a few dings and scratches before we start to paint it all one coat to make everything match better. And the final reassembly of all its components to get everything back together. Look at that panel gap, folks. Now, of course, those D20 logos are going to need a little something special to really make them pop. I'm going to be using this two-part epoxy with some red metal flake mixed in. And it's finally time to move this table to its new home. I've got my two professional movers helping me. Yeah, 
who promptly unionized and went on break. Now I could install the monitor and the glass for the final time. Make use of that storage drawer. And then play with the hidden dice towers for about 45 minutes. And now that the table's all together, how would I rate my overall satisfaction level? You guessed it. Well, the last thing to do before game day is to make some maps to play on. I've been using Incarnate.com for a while now, and I really like it because it's very efficient and user-friendly. It doesn't take any time at all to build a map, which is great because my campaign uses a lot of them. This particular battle map here took me less than five minutes. And what about the gaming experience itself? In one word, epic. This table makes a huge difference in gameplay. It makes it so much easier to communicate where the players are and what they're doing, and that means less downtime and a better overall experience for all the players. Yeah. Yeah. He's not dead yet. He's not dead yet. <laughs> right. 20! See, there, it was, you go. It, there we go. go. Yeah, That's a nice idea. Look, look at this. So, is that in the area? Yeah, it's a Every single cone. one takes 27? Yeah. Oh, so, okay. But I moved, so I didn't hit him. That's why I moved yeah. over. Well, thanks for playing with me today, and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch more Nerdcore builds. And rolling for likes... 20! <laughs> All right. What percentage of the time is spent on the names? Do they come to you, or is that like half of your effort? I don't know about like half, but yeah, at least a third. <laughs>